Welcome to our quick introduction to the 1944 film Double Indemnity. Starring classic Hollywood actors, the movie offers a gripping story that'll keep you hooked. As you watch, get ready for a mix of emotions from laughter to shock and sadness. We've got some interesting details to share, so stay tuned. Have you ever thought about which Hollywood actor you liked best in this film? Or maybe there's a scene that really stuck with you. Think about these questions as we explore more about the movie. Now we want to hear from you. What's your favorite memory or personal experience with this movie? Share your stories in the comments below. Let's keep the conversation flowing. Remember, there's more to discover about Double Indemnity, so keep watching for all the interesting facts and insights. Get ready for an exciting journey into this classic film. Released in 1944, Double Indemnity quickly grabbed attention with its captivating story and memorable characters. Directed by Billy Wilder, the movie impressed audiences and critics alike with its innovative storytelling and captivating visuals. During its release, Double Indemnity received widespread praise. People were drawn to its dark and suspenseful plot, which followed an insurance salesman, Walter Neff, as he gets caught up in a dangerous affair with a woman named Phyllis Dietrichson. Together, they plan a murder for insurance money, leading to a web of lies and deceit. The film's impact on culture was significant. It's often seen as a classic example of film noir, a genre known for its dark atmosphere, moral ambiguity, and tough dialogue. Double Indemnity helped popularize film noir and influenced many filmmakers afterward. Besides its critical acclaim and cultural significance, Double Indemnity also inspired various adaptations and spin-offs, including radio versions, stage plays, and even a TV movie. The movie continues to be referenced and honored in other works of art and media. Moreover, Double Indemnity remains popular with merchandise like posters and special edition DVDs catering to fans who still love the movie. In conclusion, Double Indemnity left a lasting impression on popular culture with its gripping story and influential style. Double Indemnity, a movie from 1944, gained recognition as one of America's greatest love stories by the American Film Institute in 22. It was adapted into a 30-minute radio show for the Screen Guild Theater on February 16, 1950, with Barbara Stanwyck reprising her role. Despite Fred McMurray's reputation for portraying nice guys, he initially hesitated to take on a darker role in the film. However, director Billy Wilder's persistence eventually convinced him to accept the challenge. During the production of Double Indemnity, Raymond Chandler once threatened to resign due to conflicts with director Billy Wilder. Chandler complained about Wilder's behavior, including interruptions during work and his mannerisms. Surprisingly, Wilder apologized to Chandler, a rare moment of humility for a producer and director. Despite their roles in the film, Fred McMurray and Edward G. Robinson never received Academy Award nominations for their performances. However, Robinson was honored with an Oscar in 1973. In the movie, Mr. Dietrichson's first name remains undisclosed, adding a layer of mystery to the character. Double Indemnity remains a classic noir film known for its gripping plot and memorable performances. Double Indemnity, a Paramount production, became a television hit after its release in 1959, captivating audiences across various cities. It aired on local stations like KETV, WITI, and WLOS, quickly gaining popularity and securing prime time slots. Over the years, it found its way onto DVD and Blu-ray, also making regular appearances on Turner Classic Movies. During its filming, Raymond Chandler, a respected writer, was retained by Paramount, a rare move that highlighted his esteemed reputation in the industry. Double Indemnity is recognized in the official top 250 narrative feature films on Letterboxd, solidifying its status as a classic noir film. Double Indemnity, released in 1944, was nominated for seven Academy Awards. However, it lost to Going My Way. Billy Wilder, the director, expressed his displeasure at the awards ceremony by tripping up Leo McCary, the director of the winning film. The following year, Wilder's film The Lost Weekend won four Oscars, while McCary's The Bells of St. Mary's only received one. Brian Donlevy declined the lead role in Double Indemnity, considering it too shady. Fred McMurray, who starred in the film, also played similar disreputable characters in other movies directed by Wilder, such as The Apartment. McMurray's role resembling his character in Double Indemnity was in Pushover, where he played a cop tempted by a gangster's mole. He also portrayed Lieutenant Tom Kiefer in The Kane Mutiny. 
Edward G. Robinson initially hesitated to join the cast because he was given a lesser role. However, he later accepted it upon realizing he was at a career transition and received equal pay. Walter Neff's original name was Walter Ness, but it was changed to avoid legal issues with a real-life insurance salesman. The movie received seven Academy Award nominations, but didn't win any, losing to Going My Way. Gene Heather, who played Lola, appeared in both films. Double Indemnity, a famous movie from 1944 in the film noir style, features Gig Young, also known as Byron Barr, playing the role of Nino. They brought Raymond Chandler on board because his writing style was similar to James M. Cain's, which made it easier to adapt the story. The movie is set in 1938 and tells a complex story with many characters all against the backdrop of that time period. Every decision made, from who acts in it to how the script is written, is aimed at making the audience feel like they're really there in that world. Double Indemnity is a great example of how to tell a story on screen well, and it's still loved by audiences today. Double Indemnity, a movie from the 1940s, got a lot of praise over the years. Raymond Chandler, in 1942, said its writer James M. Cain was like Marcel Proust, saying Cain was good at showing real-life grit. In 2007, the American Film Institute said the movie was the 29th best ever. One interesting thing about the movie is Phyllis Dietrichson's ankle bracelet. When Walter Neff first sees her, the camera focuses on it, suggesting it's important. Some people think a married woman wearing an anklet might be signaling she's available to other men. Double Indemnity is still popular because it shows lying, crime, and moral questions. It makes us think about human nature and what happens when people are greedy. Double Indemnity, a movie from the middle of the 20th century, is a big deal in American film history. In 1998, the American Film Institute called it one of the top 100 greatest American movies. While making the film, strict wartime food limits meant cops had to be on set to stop anyone from taking food from scenes. You can see this in pictures with Fred McMurray and Barbara Stanwyck with officers. Broadway actor Tom Powers, who was a big deal on stage, started doing movies again for his role as Mr. Dietrichson. This was his first movie in almost 30 years, and it kicked off a second career in movies that went on until he died in 1955. Powers being in the movie added more to the group of actors and helped make the movie well-remembered. In 1951, RKO planned to produce a film noir titled The Sins of Sarah Ferry. The plot revolved around a courthouse clerk who falls for a deceptive individual accused of armed robbery and a fatal hit and run. The cast would have included Larang Day, Fred McMurray, Yvonne DiCarlo, Hugh Beaumont, Glenn Ford, Howard Duff, and Evelyn Keyes. However, the project was shelved due to its similarity to Double Indemnity. Additionally, Arco's request to film in Binghamton went unanswered, leading to the project's cancellation. Fred McMurray, portraying Walter Neff, begins speaking into a dictaphone, setting the date as July 16, coincidentally, co-star Barbara Stanwyck's birthday. Both Double Indemnity and the 1946 film Noir the Postman Always Rings Twice feature a scene with a seductive blonde femme fatale dressed in white Barbara Stanwyck in a towel initially, later in a dress, and Lana Turner in a short shorts ensemble. 